Sing it, girl. <laughs> Sing it. Hi. Hey, Marla, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. It's good to see you. Thank you. It's good to see you, too. It's been a, a minute. Yeah, a hot minute, right? Yes. How you, how you been? How are you dealing with this uh, quarantine and COVID and all of such? Um, everything's good. It's just a little boring. Right. Plus, I like so I'm in a room that doesn't have an overhead light, so. It's all good. You still look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, I've been, I've been doing fine. How about good. you? Good. Doing good. Doing good. good. Trying to make the most of the time while we have it. Staying creative and all of such. Yeah. I love your living room concerts, too. That's a great idea. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So for the people that don't know, we're going to tell them who Myla is. Oh, right. Because she's incredible. Um. <laughs> You are a self-described oral dope slanger, queen of cool, and lover of all things R&B. Come on now. Yes. You started performing and writing at 17 years old, which was not that long ago, I'm sure. <laughs> years ago. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> I'm just going to run down a list of people that you work with. Just, wow. Okay. So, um, Diddy, making the band three. Mm -hmm. so you were almost a Danny Kane, Kish, crazy. <laughs> Producers Bam Hodge and Grammy Award winner Brian Michael Cox. Mm -hmm. B. Anthony David, Miss Lauren Hill. Wait, wait. Miss Lauren Hill. Come and on. You have to say the Miss. Miss Lauren Hill. Come on, y'all. Not answer you any other way. Uh, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to keep going. <laughs> and one of my favorite Real Housewives and members of Escape and songwriters and just girl bosses, Candy Burris. Yes. Yes, yes, God. And you also uh, recently toured Eastern Europe. How was that? It was good. Um, it was a great way to prove to myself that I um, could handle a tour. Because okay. it was very, very jam-packed, and it was just me. It, there were only a handful of shows where I actually had background singers. Mm -hmm. So it was just me. And there were 90-minute shows for the most part. So. Oh, wow. Was it an acoustic situation? Was it a live band? Full bands. Yeah. Okay. Nice, nice. Oh, it was did, interesting. How long was it? I did 20 cities and four countries in 32 days. Woo! So mama was tired. <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> That's some superstar stuff right there. That is amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're going to get into this list that you sent me. Incredible list. I'm loving all these songs. So we're just going to jump right into it, and then we're going we're gonna to play a little bit, about a minute or so. And then I'm going to ask you to talk about it and just tell us why this song changed your life, okay? Okay, real quick. Hey, Nicole. Hey, Meek. I missed this one. Uh oh Hey, Jermaine. <laughs> Antonio Jermaine. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, everybody that's tuning in. Thank you for tuning in for five songs to change my life with Milo. Okay, and... This list was hard. Let me just say that. Really? It was hard. I, I know. Everybody says that five is like a limiting number, right? Mm -hmm. But you you whittle it down to the best ones, and I think you did a great job with that. All right. So, the first song on your list is a classic. <laughs> Y'all gonna groove with groove with me on this one. I know it. Brown Sugar by D'Angelo. Let's listen to it right. a little bit because I know y'all know it, but we need to hear it again. Then we're gonna talk about it. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. You can hit a little bit now. Go ahead. Once on the old brown sugar. Hey. Once on the old brown sugar. Yes. Yes. Blessing <laughs> the people. Thank you. So that was that was the song that really started the neo soul movement. Yeah. Changed the sound of R and B, right? Mm-hmm. Why, I think why that did that song influence you? Um. So funny story, like when I was younger, I've always loved music and I've mm. always loved R&B artists. It's just that um, I didn't feel like any of them really, I didn't see myself in them. And so I was like, okay, because a lot of the women were super pulled up, like they were very glamorous and and that wasn't me. I was a little tomboy. So uh, that album, I don't remember the year it came out, but it was the first time I was kind of hearing like hip hop influences within R&B, like people were singing, 
but it still had like an edge to it. So that was interesting. And he he, he was playing the instruments and I just something about the song. I mean, he's singing about weed. Now, granted, I was <laughs> too young, but I was like, okay, you know. This lady, of, like, she was young. She was not smoking. I wasn't smoking. <laughs> But no, I just thought it was cool. Like, you know, when you're a teen or a young adult, like, well, for me anyway, things that are like a little taboo or whatever are more interesting to you. So I was like, oh, what is he talking about? So, yeah. And then he sounded great on top of it. And the whole album is jamming. It's a classic, right? And mm -hmm. don't you miss innuendo when people could talk about things and kind of make it creative that it wasn't just yeah. that? Yeah. I was talking about that with someone else, you know, because we're both songwriters. I hate that more songwriters don't even try to be creative. It's just like, let me just say what it is. Right. That's not very creative. That's why I love Jill Scott so much. When we were listening to the, uh, the battle. Oh, yeah. Jill Scott is the master of innuendo. Oh, yeah. He's so good at it. So, yeah. I'm a yeah, fan of was... all those types of songwriters. Absolutely. Uh -oh. What was the song she played? Crown Royal on Ice. Uh -huh. like, oh my God, it's the sexiest thing ever, but uh -huh. she never spells it out exactly. Yeah, she's incredible. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, hip hop brings us to our next song okay. The Booming System by LL Cool J. <laughs> Let's listen to a little bit of that and then Let's we'll talk bit. about it. Okay. Just a little bit. <laughs> All right, LL Cool J. So talk to us. How did that song influence you? So I had like a really cool mom. I didn't have the stuffy mom or the traditional mom. My mom was real cool. So mm -hmm. we, once again, so I'm terrible at dates. So I don't remember when that came out, but I remember very clearly my mom having a party. And that album had just come out, I guess. And they were like, blasting that song but me and my sister was able to be at the party and i was real cute that day like she had bought me a new outfit and i had like these patent leather creepers <laughs> so I had them. probably can't fit them but um <laughs> i just felt really grown and really cool once again i was like oh like that's when i was like i want to move to new york that's when i was like i want to be a rapper that's when i was like okay i'm gonna meet ll cool j and i'm gonna do all this cool ass stuff in new york like, I'm from Indiana, so I feel like it just kind of opened up my mind to a life outside. He was, because he's painting a picture in that song, you know. Very much so. So, yeah, it was one of the many times when I had a gateway opened in my mind where I was like, okay, I'm going to leave Indiana and I'm going to do this, 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 and this. Now, I don't know where you're from. Are you from here? I'm from South Carolina. Okay, so you may have the same uh, experience, like being from a smaller town. Mm -hmm. People kind of have a very set, rigid way of doing life. Yep. Yeah, my mom opened my mind to, to all kinds of different stuff. So those things uh, and that, that type of song just kind of make me have those memories where I was like, okay, New York, that's on the, that's on the bucket list. And I actually moved there too. Nice, nice. How was New York for you? I loved it. Hey, Bobby. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> uh, yeah, New York is great. Absolutely. New York is amazing. So, with your own music, do you aspire to transport people the same way this song sort of transported you to a different life and gave you something to us aspire to? Um, yeah, but in a different way. So, okay. like I said, I'm from a very small town, so there weren't a lot of people that, you know, would think that being a singer or a songwriter is a viable career. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was like one person that I saw from our city who was actually doing it. Like I remember one time we had this summer festival and she came back and performed, her name was Mary. And she was like, yeah, I just got back from Paris last week. Paris, you went to <laughs> Paris to sing and you got paid to do it. Nice. So once again, one of those turning point moments where I was like, okay, well I could do that too. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the way I hope to change people's mind or inspire them. Like, it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what type of background or economic status you have. Like, literally, you can achieve some things that you might not have ever seen, like, played out in your life. But all you got to do is get out there and get it. So There we go. Well, you are definitely getting out there and get it. getting it. I'm we trying. are watching you. We are loving you. We are admiring you. Do it. Thank bro. Do you. it. <laughs> 
So our next song has that hip hop vibe too, and there's actually a connection between these two songs. We're gonna see if you know what it is. Okay. Oh man, it's a classic. I don't even have to tell y'all what it is. I'm just gonna <laughs> play it. Thing is, I don't remember with them, so. Oh, it's all good. Don't be surprised you with your list. Give <laughs> it to me as well. <laughs> a classic jam. Like, you cannot put that song on and not turn up the party, okay? I still sing it at my little cover gigs. <laughs> yes. Yes, I love it. So tell me about that song and what it means to you. Um, it just reminds me of dancing with my friends and my sisters. It reminds me of parties, like uh, cookouts and stuff like that. It's just a really good reminder of childhood. And mm -hmm. it still bumps now. Like, Absolutely. I want to see, um, it wasn't New Edition and it wasn't BBD, but that, when they do the joint tour, RBRM, okay. whatever it is. I saw them last yes. summer, back in okay. Indiana. And they did that song, and still, everybody was dancing. Black, white, young, and old. Oh, man. So, there is a connection between that song and The Movement System by LL Cool J. Do you know what it is? Trivia moment. Do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, maybe a producer, but I'm not sure. <laughs> All good. They both sample the same James Brown song, Funky ah. Drunk. Did not know that. It, it's just like random research. <laughs> I'm a nerd. <laughs> so, I thought that was kind of cool. Figure that shit. <laughs> Amazing. But yeah, Poison, DVD, like you can't beat that. That song will live on forever. Forever and ever. Oh my gosh. Don't we so, all aspire to write a song like that? Amen to that. Checks on <laughs> checks on checks, okay? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of songs that will live forever, artists that just changed history, Mary J. Blige, okay? The MJB. Let's listen to one of her songs that you put on your list. It's okay. You Remind Me. All right. <laughs> the queen of hip hop soul. Yes. Oh so my God. Very wow. hard to pick one of her songs. Okay. Why this? One? I, I chose that one because it was the debut single. Mm -hmm. So you got to start at the beginning, right? Right. Um, Mary J is definitely the one person I will credit with me being a singer. Because, like I said, I wanted to rap. So, you know, singing was something I did for fun. I was like, well, maybe I'll sing my own hooks. But it's because of Mary that I became a singer. Wow. She's cool. And it's, once again, the hip-hop influence thing. She looked like girls I thought would fly. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to dress like her. I wanted to one of my hair like hers. And she just was dope. Yeah. Loved yep. everything about her. Everything. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the trajectory of her career, how she's grown and evolved and just stayed so relevant relevant and current throughout the years i think it's amazing um it's a testament to when you're relatable and people like you they're going to follow you throughout your career um mm. i've always been given the advice like you never want your songs to be bigger than you because people may like a song and they don't really rock with you so when you switch it up or you evolve they're like it's easy to just drop you wow people like mary we oh, yeah. love mary so it's like yeah. whatever you're doing i'm trying to support it Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. That's great advice. That's crazy. <laughs> I never thought about it that way, but yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh, so speaking about artists that have big songs, but we also support them as an artist, the last song on this list is You and I by the John Legend, Mr. Stevens himself. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we're going to listen to it a little bit, and then we're going to talk about it, okay? Okay. What a beautiful song. Beautiful. I think the first oh, time I heard it, I cried. I was like, Oh. You too? I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. John Legend is one of my favorite singers. He's one of my favorite songwriters. And I will say that that song changed my life because I think at the time when it came out, I was extremely jaded and bitter and just mad about love. And I was like, I'm not feeling it. And mm. it was literally like somebody put some fire under a block of ice. It's like just wow. melted. I was wow. like, wow, it, I feel like that song is what love feels like, genuine love, so it softened me up. Love that, that song is, and love that project. It was a great project, right? That was the uh, uh, Love in the Future? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So great. It's crazy because John is known for playing keys, 
But I love when he does songs over guitar bass. Yeah. There's something special about when he does guitar bass songs like that one. Incredible song. Yes. It touched me in a special place too, but I, I didn't cry. It was on the Right. <laughs> you know? I mean, I, I'll wipe my face real quick. Right. A little eye sweat. No worries. Don't worry about it. Awesome. Well, Myla, thank you so much for joining us on Five Songs That Changed My Life. Of Tell the people where they can find you and what you got coming up next. Uh, well, I make it very easy for people to find me. It's Myla Music literally on everything. So M-Y-L-A-H music dot com. Myla Music on Instagram, uh, Facebook, but I'm not really active on there. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's it. Oh, yeah. awesome. Everything is Myla Music. I keep it easy. And what's coming up? So I'm sitting on an album. Um, I had planned on having a single out. Well, I'm saying that like you don't know it. People who are listening, he wrote one of my favorite songs. He helped me write oh. one of my favorite songs on the project. Yes. <laughs> so what's happening with it? No. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> well, the plan was to have a single out like in March and then follow things up with performances. But since we're now <laughs> in indefinite quarantine, I personally... Like, the way that I grab people is live performance. Mm -hmm. So if I don't have that outlet to do it, I'm, I'm a little wary on putting my music out. I so know. the tentative plan right now is to release a single uh, late June, maybe the first week of July. I haven't decided that yet. Okay. And then release the whole album at the end of summer. So, yeah. We want that Grammy consideration, don't we? There we go. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. I love it. So real quick before you go, I played a little bit of Off of You for people while you were joining us. Uh -huh. So tell me how that collaboration came about with the great Rico Love. Um, how did it come about? I think at the time I was just kind of, um, we were trying to make my sound a little more, I hate to say commercial, because that's not saying that it wasn't commercial, but very much more polished. Mm -hmm. um, and Rico's a great songwriter, so... Um, my team was just kind of giving me songs uh, that other people have written. And, you know, I'm a songwriter, so they were good songs. I'm like, all right, I wouldn't really say that. But when I heard that one, before I even know that, knew that he wrote it, I was like, this is dope. So it was more so we didn't, like, we didn't go in the studio together and do it. We kind of just collabed via um, talking on the phone and stuff like that. And this was really, really simple. Nice. I love it. I love it. I can't wait to hear the project in its entirety. Yeah, I'm excited. Awesome. It's really good stuff. Nice. Cannot wait. Well, thank you again so much for being my second guest on the show. Thank You're you welcome. so much. <laughs> again, MylaMusic.com is where you can find all things Myla. You can keep up with her and anticipate her project for a late summer release. Yes. Just cross. <laughs> no, it's coming out. It's definitely coming out. Thank I've been you. Been on it too long. We're ready, girl. We're ready. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay, yeah, we're real ready then. <laughs> yeah, we're ready. Awesome. Well, have a great evening. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Have a good night, y'all. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>